because we're talking about that what he has, we have. Well, we were in him. That means that whenever the terms in him are used in the Bible, in him, in Christ, in Jesus, all these different terms, it means that whenever he did it, it was put to our account. That's, what it, that's literally what it means, that we were in him. In other words, it said that Christ was in Abraham when God made the covenant with Abraham and that through Abraham, Jesus would come into the world. So it's, it's talking about that it was counted by Abraham toward Christ. Now for us, in Christ, everything he did is, is accounted to us. So when it says that we were with him, for instance, we were, with, we were in him, because you have to remember, okay, we were considered, those of us who have become believers, and God knew beforehand we were going to be believers. Now, he didn't pick and choose, say, you're going to be a believer, you can't be a believer, I will not let you be a believer, you're going to go to hell no matter what, okay? Uh, that's hyper-Calvinism, it is not biblical. <clears throat> and so, but God, God's foreknowledge of who will and who won't is, is biblical, right? So he knows. Now, those of us that are in Christ, we were in him according to God before the foundation of the world. Even before, why? Because Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. In other words, even though he didn't get crucified for thousands of years later, it was already considered as done because God had already seen. He saw the end from the beginning. And so he already considered it done. So he already considered you in Christ because he knew you were going to get in Christ. So he considered you in Christ even before you were even thought of in this world. Amen? That's how good God is and and how much his foreknowledge is. Now, the good thing about that is this. If he knew all of that and knows everything that's going to work out, that's why he's got good works for us to walk in. Why? They are foreordained. He's already seen it. He's just waiting for you to get there and for you to meet that person at that point in time. He knows where you're going to be. That's why you don't have to worry about, oh, am I following the Lord? Oh, am I following? Oh, I, dear Lord, just lead me. Lord, just lead me. He even knows whenever you're going to disobey and how he has to rearrange things to make it work. And, and all that was included in the program from before. Amen? Does that make sense? And so what does that mean? That means you can go, you can actually rest. Amen? And just walk, live your life, loving God, loving people, reaching out, doing what, you, what, what is at hand to do. And you're going to do things at times that, you, that are going to make no sense. And, and you're going to think, why am I going to this store? I, I, there's nothing there I want. And you go inside and just kind of wander around, and lo and behold, you run into somebody that needs something, and you give it to them. Why? Because probably two things. Number one, you're not as good at following the leading of the Spirit as you think you are. So he gets you there anyway, and you don't even know what you're doing there. And at the same time, he can even, a lot of times... <clears throat> It's because you were supposed to meet that person last week at another store and disobeyed. So now it's like, well, why am I going here? I don't even want to go there. You know what? what, what I, I guess we, I need something there. And you go in, and you run into a person, and it's because he has corrected you because what he wanted to happen didn't happen last week. Does this make sense? I'm telling you, this, this is, for the most part, honestly, I just tell you, it's how I live my life. It's just, you know, I have, you know, man <laughs> makes his plans, God directs his steps. That's the way. And, and our plans and his steps don't always match. We, he wants them to, and we want them to, and sometimes we get so focused on trying to match them that we get out of step, which is the sad part, because a lot of times our steps that we formulate are religious and not spirit. All right? Just think about that. So anyway, he says... Now, uh, so whenever he was in the garden, we were in him. See, if we were in him when he was on the cross, we were in him when he was at the whipping post. And if we were in him when he was at the whipping post, and we were in him when he was in the garden. Well, in the garden, the chastisement of our peace was upon him because he bled drops of blood because of the extreme anguish. And that was so you don't have to go through mental anguish. That was the first time he bled for you. Then the second time was at the whipping post. And you were in him there. And he bore the stripes for you. That that should have been you getting whipped. Don't have time to go into it now, but 
even the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus called what she went through, her plague, a whipping. And he healed her because he was going to take that whipping in just a short time. And so he, he went through these things for us. In other words, we should have done it, but we couldn't because even if we'd have done it, we wouldn't have been the pure sacrificial lamb that he was because for us, we already deserved it because of our sin, because it had not yet been forgiven. And so whenever he was on the cross, we were in him on the cross. When he shed his blood for our sins, it took away our sins. It didn't take away his. So his blood took away our sins, and we became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus through that, recognizing that, and because we have accepted him and made him Lord. And whenever we were at the whipping post, he bore the stripes for us. He bore our sicknesses and diseases so that we don't have to. And it's the same thing with the mental anguish in the garden. So all of these things, we were in him. Now, <clears throat> we were in him, as I said, because when he was striped because of his stripes, we were healed because he bore them for us in our stead. That's the thing. Now, 